morning everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It is a beautiful spring day today. It is about like 55 degrees, it's breezy, low humidity, and it is sunny. It is beautiful to be out doing some photography. So today I'm out actually at a relatively new place to me. Um, I'm kind of doing a dual purpose video. I'm actually getting some video for a land trust and I'm also gonna be creating this YouTube video for you as well. So um, we're gonna be out hiking some trails and seeing what wildlife we can find. So far, I found a, a female common young, yellow throat in the shrub area that's around here. And there's also a gray cat bird that is just serenading me right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but so far it's a great start. It's a beautiful day and I'm excited to see what we can find. Made it to a bit of an overlook. And it's kind of like a rocky jut out that's kind of overlooking into the forest. So I'm gonna sit here for a little while and see if there's gonna be any of the uh, species that are more in the canopy, because I can actually see pretty f well into the canopy now. There's a there's an oven bird that's calling down below me somewhere, and I've heard or Orioles and Scarlet Tanagers in the canopy as well. So I'm hoping that maybe if I sit here for a little while that I might actually get a glimpse of one and be able to get some pictures and video of them. Okay, so this is really cool. I was sitting kind of in the overlook area and I actually moved down a little bit down on the hill because I thought I heard a Tennessee warbler, which was a species I've never heard before or seen before. So I went down the hill a little bit to try to photograph the Tennessee warbler. Couldn't find it, couldn't find it. And then all of a sudden a yellow-bellied sapsucker landed on the tree next to me and I realized looking up the tree a little bit there's actually a hole in the trunk where there's a cavity where they're nesting so I just saw uh, one of the yellow-bellied sapsuckers come over to the tree and then the one that was actually in the nest just flew out so I'm going to um, try to set up somewhere I've moved farther away from the tree and actually once I moved farther away from the tree they actually uh, went back to normal and actually exchanged positions in the nest. So I'm going to see if I can set up somewhere that's far enough away that they can actually uh, relax and do their thing. And I'm just trying to find a clear path that I can actually see the nest from far enough away with all these branches in the way. So um, I'm just going to go find a spot and then sit and wait and hopefully see some activity at the nest. set up. I am downhill from the nest and they just swapped out again so I just need to be patient, sit and wait and hopefully they'll come back soon.
I sat by the nest long enough to observe the woodpeckers exchange positions twice. After the second time, I decided it was time for me to move on so I wouldn't disturb them any longer. This is one of those seasons where it's really stressful to be a bird photographer. There are American red stars everywhere. And they keep flying so close. Now it's over that side. One thing with photographing these warblers, you need to be ready to move, that's for sure. Because they are fast. Well, this has been a really productive spot. It's a, a really kind of, uh, kind of a weedy, shrubby area. A lot of second growth trees, a lot of maples and birches coming up that the, the saplings are still only a couple inches in diameter, which means there's a lot of vegetation low to the ground, which allows the, the birds like the American red starts to be pretty low to the ground, easy to photograph, easy in parentheses, quotation marks, sorry. Um, they're still really fast, but this is a really productive spot. Um, I was here for probably about a half hour, 45 minutes now, and there's American red starts that are still around. There's some hermit thrushes that are still around. Um, there's also a, if you can hear that, it's a rose-breasted grosbeak that I wasn't able to photograph. It actually landed right behind me, and I didn't want to turn around too quick to scare it, and it actually just flew off once I actually got my camera around anyway. Um, but there's also a blue-gray gnatcatcher in the trees over here. And there's a, a vireo, I'm not too sure which kind, probably a red-eyed vireo, because I've seen them um, today, that's been calling over here as well. So, super productive spot. Um, finally got some decent, decent pictures of the red start. They're a really cool bird. The black and orange is just an awesome contrast. And I think I'm gonna move on. Um, Still got a long way to go yet. It's calling right up in the tree behind me here. It's, it's right up in the tree up here. Um, so I'm gonna leave it be and uh, continue on, see what else I can find. I just love this time of year because there's so much activity in the forest. There's so many different kinds of species of birds and just in one spot, I mean, I probably heard close to a dozen species of birds. Um, it is just so nice and so easy to enjoy it.
There's two Scarlet Tanagers, two male Scarlet Tanagers, and they're both trying to impress a female Scarlet Tanager. And they're actually pretty low to the ground. The males are trying to attract the female and they're staying pretty low to the ground because it looks like the female is actually on the ground. Um, they're flying kind of maybe 20 feet off the ground or so, so it's, it's doable to get a picture and I'm going to see if I can get them when the males are actually trying to attract the mate. We'll see, see if they come this way. The uh, Scarlet Tanagers flew off. Um, it looks like one of the males won. Uh, the other male flew off, but the other male flew with the female, so I think he's still trying to attract her. Um, but that was really cool, because that's really, it's usually a canopy species, so when they come down closer to the forest floor, it was a really cool experience. They're just such a bright red, and even the females, even there, they're kind of like a dull yellow, olive yellow color. They're still really beautiful too, so that was a really cool experience. I'm glad I was able to see that. There's a hermit thrush. It was foraging on the ground and now it's up in a tree about five feet off the ground. I'm hoping that it'll come back down onto the forest floor to get some other pictures. I got a couple good shots. I'm hoping maybe it'll come down and we can get some more. It almost looks like it's going to be trying to take a nap though, so... We'll see if it comes back down. I was mistaken in my identification of these birds as hermit thrushes. They're actually viris, which is also a bird in the thrush family. But they migrate north in the summer and are common in moist, deciduous forests, which is exactly where I was. I'd never seen them so active on the forest floor before. There's actually a second one. There's a second one farther out. As I was laying on the ground, it was amazing to have these two birds come within about 15 feet of me as they were foraging in the wet rocks along the trail. I stayed here for about a half hour photographing these birds.
these two thrushes are just foraging along this trail. And then as I was sitting watching them, a female scarlet tanager came down and started collecting nesting materials. And now this thrush is sitting about 10 feet away from me in a tree. This is so cool. This is why sometimes you just need to find a spot and sit and just see what happens because otherwise you'd never get experiences and animals this close to you if you just kept moving around all the time. Awesome. All right, the thrush has kind of moved farther a little bit off the trail. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to kind of slowly and as quietly as I can go past the trail so I can leave it be. This is a really nice overlook. Gets you higher up into the canopy so you can actually be closer to some of the canopy species. There's a, there's a scarlet tanager calling back that way. So there's also quite a few different wildflower species up here because there's a big gap in the canopy so you can see out. But there's enough sunlight now that there's enough shrubs and some flowers that are blooming. So. It's a nice, nice, nice spot to sit and relax. As it got later in the day, the bird activity in the forest decreased significantly. So I decided to hike up to a stream that flows through the forest, and I sat there for a few minutes to enjoy the sounds of the forest. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, and maybe even share this video or any of my other videos with your friends and family. Be sure to stay tuned for my next video where I find the nest of a wood thrush in the forest. I'll see you next time.